please, ma'am. And we've got President Johnson online too. So yes, ma'am, I saw. Um, well, we'll call the meeting to order at 301. And first off, we're gonna recognize our president, Mary Johnston, and let her say a couple of words. And uh, thank you, Camilla. Thank you for uh, scheduling these region meetings. I think they're very beneficial and kind of keep us all connected, especially during these strange times we're going through. But I hope everyone's doing well, staying healthy and safe, and that you had a happy Thanksgiving. And um, also just want to remind you that the conference for next May in Grand Rapids, a preliminary uh, program has been sent out. So I hope you signed up, made your hotel reservations, and we will be there in Grand Rapids in May, and we will be celebrating IMC 75th anniversary. We are going to have a good time. We are going to party. So be sure you get signed up and registered for the conference as soon as possible. Thank you, President Mary. Um, and um, before we get going to um, our updates, I wanted to recognize Karen Lee, the IMC uh, Communications Coordinator for helping us to uh, pull this meeting together. Camilla and I could not have done it. We probably could have, but it wouldn't have been as professional, let's say as it is. So thank you, Karen, for that. And I'd also like to recognize uh, Camilla for jumping up and, and taking the lead. As many of you may have heard, I was uh, um, diagnosed with ovarian cancer back in May. So I've been missing in action. And I am now, as my doctor told me yesterday, cancer free. But, um, you know, we have to kind of sort of just take care of ourselves. So my plan moving forward is to take a hormone pill once a day for two years. And then um, after five years, if there's no signs of cancer, they officially give me a cancer-free diagnosis. So that's my excuse. And I hope y'all accept it. It was rough, but I am on the other side of it. And I thank God for that. Um, the other thing I want to say is um, we, we do want to hold this meeting to 30 minutes, if at all possible because we do respect your time and know that some of you may have council meetings today. So on that note, and on a, a, another note that more information on the um, annual conference will be discussed later if you have any questions. But um, Camilla will now give us a mid-year meeting update. We're glad to see everybody from North Carolina and South Carolina on this call. Um, we conducted a meeting a few moments ago with Florida, and uh, so we divided the region into three, believing the number of people that we have, that it was probably more beneficial that way. And so um, we are here with North Carolina and South Carolina in this session, and it's so good to see all of y'all. And I've got my deputy clerk behind me here. She felt like she was getting it live and in person, so she didn't sign up. Uh, <laughs> So here we go. Um, after the cancellation of our annual meeting uh, in St. Louis, the IIMC Board of Directors conducted a virtual meeting uh, on the same days that we would have conducted the live meetings in St. Louis. Uh, it was conducted by Zoom and it worked very well then. And during that incoming board me meeting, uh, IIMC conducted the oath of office for President Mary Johnston, for President-elect Sherry Pierce of Valdez, Alaska, and for Vice President and fellow Region 3 member, if you don't know, uh, Pamela Smith, and Pamela was with Sanibel, and she's a former Region 3 director uh, with Lisa Verling, and Lisa was, is online here with us today. Um, she is now with Lee County, so, um, and the last one was our immediate past president, Lana McPherson from DeSoto, Kansas. Um, our mid-year meeting, was recently conducted and it was conducted in person and via Zoom and Grand Rapids. And it was a unique experience to uh, have been one of the presenters uh, trying to manage both the Zoom and in-person conversations during the Athenian dialogue. But it is our home for our 75th anniversary and for our annual conference in May. And I don't know, President Mary was there with us and I, I was very, very pleased 
with the accommodations. Uh, my flight there, I'm not gonna say which I took. If you wanna ask, I'll tell you later. But uh, the flight, I could have not asked for anything better. Everybody was very conscientious and sanitizing everything and, and just everything they did, it was great. And the hotel was just as conscientious as well. And I actually called Chris yesterday and said, did we have any results of any issues? Uh, we're past 14 days of everybody being back. And he said he received no reports on anything. So we are excited about uh, uh, moving towards uh, May. And as President Mary said, the information is out and Sonia's gonna share some more information, but I encourage you to attend. Um, during our meeting uh, at the Amway Hotel in Grand Rapids, First of all, uh, we conducted a leadership training on Friday by presenting an Athenian dialogue. And it was certainly my honor to do that. Uh, President Mary, I thank you again for offering me that opportunity. Some of y'all have taken Sully with me. Uh, in fact, we did it live on March the 13th. And I think that's the last time we saw each other in person. Uh, some of y'all were there with me, but uh, we were able to conduct Sully at that time. On the Saturday, during the Saturday board meeting, uh, we had a number of in information and uh, decisions that were made at that meeting. And I wanted to share with you just some of the key highlights. First of all, uh, we approved a $5 membership due increase for full members, additional members and associate members. We anticipate the increase to come with the first batch of um, registrate of membership dues that will occur in January of 2021. We have not had an increase in three years. And so we thought that prudent at this time and we appreciate everybody's understanding with that increase. Um, and again, that should be coming out with the first batch of, of invoices in January. We directed the Educational and Professional Development Committee to review a new educational endeavor uh, if you remember back in uh, 2019, an education task force was developed and created. They met, they provided recommendations. And so we were slated to review those in May, but uh, due to us learning the new process of being virtual, uh, we asked that the meeting uh, and the discussion be moved to the November mid-year meeting. We discussed that and reviewed the program there. And we also had received a report from Region 9 uh, providing some recommendations as well. And so that is your California, Oregon, um, Washington, uh, Alaska area. So uh, we have sent all that back to the Educational and Professional Development Committee and asked them to review all that information and to make a recommendation to us re reviewing our current certification program and any proposed extensions to that certification program. Uh, back in May, we uh, received a recommendation to conduct virtual Athenian dialogues. Uh, some of you have participated in those. Uh, the, decision, the decision at that time was made uh, to allow for the virtual Athenian dialogues and to review the matter back in November through January timeframe. When we were at the meeting, at the mid-year meeting, we agreed to extend Athenian Dialogues through June 30th of 2021. Uh, so if you're looking to schedule any uh, in your state, then please uh, realize at this point in time, the one thing that I have found is it provides more opportunities for other individuals, including our international members, to participate in these sessions. Uh, one of the dialogues I did for Florida, we had people, we had President Mary's uh, deputy clerk with us, and we also had individuals from Connecticut to Alaska. So it is a great opportunity to offer Athenian dialogues and for a number of members throughout the United States and across uh, the international areas to participate in those if you're interested in offering those in your state. Uh, we directed the policy committee to create a new policy regarding an IIMC employee recognition program to create a new process for an annual business meeting if it cannot be held in person uh, to clarify language regarding retired member definition 
And I believe we do have one outstanding item that is a constitutional item that was going to be taken up in May. And that was to amend the constitutional requirement uh, to require someone who is wanting to become a candidate for region director to have a written letter of support by a member or from his or her state association. So um, my belief is that will be on uh, the business meeting when we meet in Grand Rapids since we did not take that item up in St. Louis. We approved the 2020 budget, making it 12 consecutive years. The IIMC's budget is in the positive. We are thrilled and excited about that and look forward to extending that run for a number of years. Uh, looking at our 2021 budget, we approved that budget as well. Uh, it is scheduled, however, to end the year in a deficit. And so we have requested as a board uh, for staff to search for ways to amend that deficit. So uh, we are ending up in the black and not in the red. Uh, we approved the 2019 annual CPA partial audit uh, and reviewed that information and approved it and are very excited uh, for the positive reports we received there. And also, if you're not familiar, uh, Dr. Jane Long previously served as our Director of Professional Development. Uh, she resigned from the position back in, um, I think she left the organization in May. And since then, um, we have been discussing the process of hiring a new director. At this time, we are looking uh, to have someone in place, hopefully after the annual conference 2021, or at least by July of 2021. Uh, recommendation plan has been given to the executive board um, the executive committee for their review uh, earlier in the year. The meeting also focused on managing options for the 2021 conference, uh, allowing for educational programs via virtual platforms, especially for region 10 and region 11, since they are outside the continental United States. Um, and despite COVID-19 pandemic, um, IIMC throughout the process has maintained its membership and member engagement. So we have stepped outside the box as clerks. We have accepted the challenge to move forward into a virtual world and to find different ways of uh, being able to educate one another. Uh, we'd love to see each other in person more often, I'm sure, uh, but it sure is nice to see all of your faces uh, on this call. And that is the information that I have to report from our mid-year board of directors meeting uh, from back in November. Sonia. Are there any questions of Camilla based on what the information that she gave us is about any of, on the updates that she mentioned? Well, if not, we'll talk briefly again about um, the IIM annual conference um, in Grand Rapids. Um, that was discussed um, intensely at our mid-year, um, which was attended by all of the, most of the board of directors who could make it. And it was either in person or virtual. I was on virtual. Um, it is my plan to attend um, Grand Rapids one way or the other next year, since I have such good hopes for the future. But um, I can assure you that um, IIMC is prepared either way based on COVID um, to have either the in-person or to go virtual. They're working hard both ways and working with the hotels. And um, of course the hotel is the one that would determine if we could not hold it based on their COVID restrictions at that time. And, and we'll hear from that. As our president said, and uh, Camilla information was uh, mailed out. So there's no reason for y'all not to get the early bird special and to go ahead and um, send in your information. Um, that's all I have on that. And at this time, Camilla will give us a region three conference update. Okay, um, our Region 3 conference, this, since a lot of North Carolina people online, many of you know uh, what I know, 
and they know more. And I know we've got Pamela Casey online as well. So Kate, Pamela, if you have any additional information to share, please feel free to do so. Um, we have sent out a save the date, which is February the 17th through the 19th virtual meeting. Um, we are having an Athenian dialogue, which is scheduled for February the 16th. Um, and I just, uh, with this being um, a virtual meeting, I just want to give North Carolina Association of Municipal Clerks kudos uh, because in August, when you conducted your annual meeting, I had an opportunity to present a session at the end of the conference. And I kept an eye on the individuals who were participating and we still had 200 plus individuals that were online. So that was just an overwhelming experience to participate in. And uh, I thank y'all for allowing me to participate, but y'all did a bang up job. And I had no doubt when you said you had to go virtual that North Carolina could do it uh, because I saw you do it in August. Um, at this time, we do not have a registration amount. Today is December 1st and we would normally be sending out our quarterly newsletter, but um, I have offered to hold up on that because I really do want to have the information for the conference uh, in that newsletter. So hopefully maybe sometime the end of next week, uh, but we are delaying the newsletter so we can make sure all the information is included in there. Pamela, do you have anything you want to add at this time? I know y'all are working on the agenda. We are, thank you, Camilla. We are working on the agenda. Um, of course, you know that 2020 is a different year and sponsorship is a bit of a challenge um, in this year because a lot of the vendors um, aren't as willing at this stage to sponsor conferences as they are when they can come in person. We also had some issues relative to um, making the conference, the hotel and um, the convention center and all those kind of things. So there, there've been a few hiccups, but we are um, moving forward, working on the agenda. I will say this one thing that may be different in working with the agenda, uh, you all will know that usually in an in-person conference, the business meeting is on the morning of the last day, which is the third day. But due to that being the only thing that would happen on Friday, we are thinking of moving that business meeting to lunch on Thursday. Um, we did that with our summer conference. It worked well. We had a short break to allow folks to go and get their lunch and then to hurry back and join the business meeting. If we can make that happen, and I think that will be the plan, uh, I think it will be difficult, if not impossible, to get folks to log back in on Friday just for the business meeting, and business meetings are important. So that is the, the current change that we're looking at. So again, the um, Athenian dialogue would be first, that would be on Tuesday, starting about 9 a.m., going until four with lunch and some breaks. And then Wednesday would start about 8.30 and ending about 5.15. And then Thursday, um, you know, about the same schedule, but with that business meeting midday during the luncheon. And we've got some awesome speakers for y'all. So I'm really excited about being able to get the schedule out and for you to see these speakers. They're going to be just as good virtually as they would uh, in person. I have no doubt about it. So very excited about getting that to you. I hope, Camilla, we can get that to you. Um, next week. I cannot make promises though because I'm not the actual one doing it. So uh, I am the one nudging though. So. Well, we appreciate you nudging on that, Pam. Um, the schedule, I have two questions. First of all, the question that we're going to be asked most importantly is the cost. I know we have some individuals that have January through December budgets. And so they're trying to finish up their year. So as soon as we can find out what the registration cost would be, uh, that would be very helpful. Um, and the schedule itself 
in estimating the speakers, do you have an estimate of the hours that would be turned in to IMC requesting points? Um, I need to complete that. And I, really my plan is to get um, our person with our school of government involved in that and to get him to approve it. He is much more familiar with IIMC's guidelines than I am. So I can assure you that once he reviews it, it is going to meet their guidelines because he's familiar with doing that. So I can't tell you that off the top of my head, but I can give you a guesstimate of the cost. And I'm thinking it is um, about $100 or less. So I'm feeling. Okay. Now, um, those are the two items that I would recommend that's probably going to be key but no matter what, with it being virtual, I have no doubt that it's going to be very successful with the number of people signing on. Um, I know in my case, I can allow my deputy clerk to participate because we're both here in the office. Uh, but if I were leaving, she would not be able to leave and come to the region meeting. So um, we'll do as much promotion as we possibly can to make sure we get the word out. Um, and make sure we have a bang out, a bang up turnout. Um, so we appreciate everything y'all are doing. It's a lot of work on your part. And I know it was a lot in trying to reorganize the hotel. So thank you to everyone involved in North Carolina uh, for hosting it. It is a unique and challenging year, but uh, clerks rise to the occasion when we come to challenges and I appreciate all of y'all's assistant in North Carolina. If there is anything we can do as, an, as a region, please don't hesitate to reach out to Sonia or myself and let's get the other states involved, see if we can assist you in any form or fashion. Thank you so much. I really mm -hmm. appreciate that as we all do. And one quick question to you about the Athenian dialogue. Can you give an estimate of that cost? Um, that, that is up to the um, host uh, state to how you want to handle that. The average cost, um, it, it changes and some of them have been reduced, but of course the average cost is normally $100. Um, so if you want to fluctuate down, some, that, that's strictly a call for the state okay. that is hosting. Okay. Thank you. Okay, same, same time and effort's gonna be put into it, whether you're sitting in person or if you're sitting online. So uh, I defer that to the state and, and y'all can determine that. Yeah, I do wanna make it clear though, that's a separate, that is separate from the, the conference. Right, so just, right. Okay. Thank you, well, you ma'am. Um, you had another question on if you could tell the book for the Athenian on the 16th. That was a little chat question we had. Oh, y'all are on chat. Now, what's the question again? Um, what is the book for the Athenian on February 16th? And now, you know, North Carolina, they don't play. Come on now. They are on top of their stuff. I, I did tell, no, I did tell Florida. So we'll definitely announce it here as well. Uh, the Girls of Atomic City, uh, the story of Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and the development of uranium that helped to create the atomic bomb. And uh, I was able to do that one in person. I think I had somebody from North Carolina come up. For, Lisa, did you come up for that one? Someone from North Carolina came up for that one, but we did it a year and a half ago at Oak Ridge. And uh, we had, a, a bless her heart, she's passed away, but we actually had a tr Calatron girl with us who spoke in person and said she felt like she was on the Oprah Winfrey show because I kept asking her so many questions and I said well you're the real deal we want to hear from you and know everything about you so um, we may be doing something very similar so keep your eyes and ears open for it and if you want to take it it is on Amazon of course order it from Amazon but it's on Audible as well so I'm re-listening to it right now on Audible myself but the girls of Atomic City Denise Kiernan, she is from the Asheville area and a, a North Carolina resident. So uh, that's the reason for picking the book for y'all. And that information will be on the registration as well. Good, good. Thank you, Pam. Miss Sonia, 
Well, if there's any other questions or um, comments that we talked about, now's a good time for people to kind of speak up. Or if you want to use the little private chat, just know I'm monitoring it and we'll speak up on your behalf. So are there any questions, any more questions about anything regarding the annual conference or the uh, regional conference? If not, um, remember you can use the, the chat. I'm kind of a shy person too, so I know what that's about. But um, Camilla has a, a notebook full of reminders for everybody that she wants to go over real quick. Well, anybody that knows me knows, and I shared my philosophy with Karen earlier, if you don't promote yourself, nobody else will. And so this is a promotion for IIMC we want to remind you about. Um, the IIMC annual conference grants, applications for those will be accepted through February 12th of 2021. Uh, I've been blessed to receive one of those grants previously. And so, you know, registration, I think I got mine in and it was 770. So to have your registration paid for is a big financial assistance. Uh, so we award two of those from each region each year. So I encourage you to get online and complete one of those uh, grant applications and get it turned in as soon as possible. Also, we wanna remind you of the CMC and MMC scholarships. Um, there are applications that are currently available and open through March the 1st. So uh, that is, uh, recipients receive $400 towards your CMC or MMC scholarship reimbursement after completion of the program. And the recipients for this year will be selected for the funding programs taking place June 1st of 2021 through May 31st of 2022. So all of that information is on the IIMC website. Um, Sonia, uh, you may want to mention about the Region 3 director um, because we have denoted and received information that we will, Sonia is finishing her year with us in May. And so Alabama is the year that is up uh, for replacement. So someone uh, we hope will be uh, applying from Alabama to serve uh, and fill the shoes of Sonia. Uh, as she completes her term on the board of directors. And then uh, committee applications for 21-22. Uh, those applications are now due January the 15th. So you can go online and apply to serve on one of our committees for IIMC. It is a wonderful opportunity to learn more about IIMC and to enlarge your networking territory and to make a difference in our professional organization. So uh, I have been honored to serve on a number of them as well as some of you that are on this call and you know what changes it can make to you and growth learning about our organization and helping to make recommendations and decisions. It takes a lot of people to serve on those committees and we just want to strongly encourage you uh, to apply and uh, again, that deadline is January 15th. Also, as reminders, please make sure and check out uh, if you're receiving eNews Digest, that's the bi-monthly magazine from IIMC and the e-briefing, which is the weekly emails from IIMC. If you're not receiving them, Karen is your go-to person. So make sure and contact with her to make sure you're getting those notifications. And also, if you have not liked us on Facebook, I encourage you to go to International Institute of Municipal Clerks. That is our general organization Facebook page. And we also have our own Facebook page, IIMC Region 3, IIMC Region 3. And that's where we uh, acknowledge individuals who are receiving their certifications. We post our notices, our save the date for the region meeting. Uh, so make sure and like us on Facebook. Uh, and then, uh, we hope you're getting our regional three, our region three newsletter. It's a quarterly newsletter, April, August, and December. And so we will be waiting to publish the December until we get the uh, region three information in. Uh, we certainly want everybody to get that information and to register for that conference. That is all I have. Miss Sonia, please um, share with us um, yeah. about the rest of your year. 
about the rest of my year? Yes, ma'am. Well, it's like you said, uh, that in a nutshell, it's over um, in May. Um, normally we go until the um, business meeting, um, the banquet dinner, and um, well, actually the business meeting, I wanna say that morning when everybody's sworn in, um, and then my time is up. And um, because it is rather nostalgic for me, I will be there. Not virtually, but I may be the only one there, but I, I'll be in Grand Rapids one way or the other. I promise you that. Um, and I do appreciate Camilla stepping up to the plate. I had an easy term when I first came on. Lisa was just coming off. And Lisa was a lot of help to me. And, and Pamela was my partner in crime, Pamela Smith, who will be president soon. Um, so I enjoyed my time on and from here up until um, my time is up, I do intend to be as um, active as possible since I had that little, you know, that little small incident of cancer to come up, you know, but um, Alabama is the next state that comes uh, up for replacement. So we're waiting patiently to see who's going to put in for that and if there'll be any election or if just, just there'll be one person, we don't know yet, but we will know soon and everybody will be notified of that. Um, if there's no other questions or reminders, again, being respectful of your time, it's 3.32 and we'll adjourn. Okay. We thank all of you for joining us today and we hope you had a great Thanksgiving and we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year if we don't talk to you before then. So thank y'all so much. Have a great rest of the week.